Hi there, and welcome back to another episode of Ancient Ailments. I'm Jax, and today I'll be focusing on the weird cure-alls that our ancient societies came up with, or at least some of them. Some of these are hilarious and quite interesting in their own way. I sincerely hope you enjoy. Our first ailment is bloodletting, also known as phlebotomy. Phlebotomy is the surgical opening or puncture of a vein in order to withdraw blood to introduce a fluid or, historically, when letting or draining blood. While this practice is still around to this day for things such as hemochromatosis and polycythemia, ancient bloodletting was way more common and way more intense. Greek physicians Hippocrates and Galen, who are well renowned as some of the leaders into modern medicine, endorsed bloodletting as a cure-all for most diseases and conditions. They believed that the human body was made up of four different basic substances or humors, yellow bile, black bile, phlegm, and blood, and that an overabundance of one of these substances, specifically blood or bad blood, could cause these health issues. In order to restore a patient to full health, blood drainage was prescribed to rid the body of excess blood, which would usually then go into a receptacle. Leeches were also sometimes used rather than cutting open a vein. The unfortunate but predictable fault of ancient to 19th century bloodletting was how common it was for patients to accidentally die during the procedure. However, it stayed as a popular cure well into the 19th century and was even offered by barbers as a common service alongside haircuts and shaves. The popularity only ceased when finally studies by the likes of William Harvey and Pierre Charles Alexandre Lewis, oh my gosh, what a mouthful, as well as others, concluded that the treatment was hardly as effective as everyone thought and may even be doing more harm than good. Duh. Our next cure is actually the oldest known form of surgery, and this sounds really cool and interesting, but just you wait. Trepanation is the act of boring a hole into the skull with a trepan, and is known to be around 7,000 years old, give or take. Unfortunately for us, all we have as to why ancient societies decided putting holes in skulls was a good idea is a great deal of speculation and debate, with some believing it to have been a spiritual ritual to drive out evil forces, and others believing that the procedure was far more conventional and done to treat epilepsy, blood clots, headaches, and abscesses. There are many other theories out there too, equally heavily debated, but no one is particularly sure. Trepid skulls found in Peru suggest that it was also used as an emergency treatment to clear up bone fragments from skull fractures. Interestingly enough, multiple sources seem to disagree on the survival rate of this procedure. According to History.com, many patients were found to have survived this gruesome trial. However, according to ScienceDirect.com, a great deal of truth in skulls indicate that the patients died during or shortly after the surgery. I have a question that I would like you as the viewer to answer. Why do you think ancient societies introduced and continued the use of trepanation? What are your theories? Let me know. Our final focus for today's video is rather humorous, or maybe that's just to me. In modern society, we recognize liquid mercury, as well as any other kind of mercury, to be a fairly dangerous chemical to ingest, especially in excess, and by excess we mean any more than 0.1 micrograms per kilo of body weight per day. So on US average, around about for an adult, 8 micrograms per day. However, while we have a firm-ish understanding of its toxic properties, classical societies certainly did not quite have our level of knowledge on the subject. In ancient Greece and Persia, mercury was used as a common ointment, and 2nd century Chinese alchemists considered quicksilver and red mercury sulfide to have the ability to increase lifespan and vitality. However, some healers claimed that by ingesting a brew of mercury, sulfur, and arsenic, you would gain immortality and the ability to walk on water. One rather famous person to allegedly fall into this idea was Chinese Emperor Jin Shi Huang. Sorry, I didn't pronounce it. I feel like I would butcher it. He supposedly ingested mercury pills designed to make him live forever. Obviously and hilariously, this did not quite go as planned or so the story goes. However, that was not the end of mercury medicine. 
From the Renaissance era through to the early 20th century, mercury was used as a common treatment for STIs, or back then, STDs, such as syphilis. While some claimed that the treatment was highly successful in curing these diseases and infections, patients often died of liver and kidney damage due to mercury poisoning, which now comes as a surprise to exactly no one. Well everyone, that is it for this video. It is a little short, but I kinda like to keep it that way. If you would like to hear about more strange and interesting cures of the old days, be sure to let me know down below, or on Twitter, at AscendingAthena. Let me also know what you found interesting, what you learned, and what you'd love to see next. Do all the likes and the shares and such if you enjoyed, and until next time, check your facts. Bye!